Hello, welcome back oh, to another episode of Extractions and Aya. Today we are on our Cubane hunt, the hunt for Cubane. This is episode two, really, well, I don't know, two or three or one or whatever. Our task today is to make that dye ether at the end there. This is our end product. And it's a reasonably simple reaction. I don't think it's too complicated and we're copying it basically directly from our text. Uh, there's, there's a little few changes. So we're acting this ketone here with ethylene glycol, which is, you know, this two carbons with the two uh, alcohol groups on the end of it. And this is a reasonably common reaction because it's kind of a protecting group in a sense. To so say you had this molecule and you had a double bond, say here, and you wanted to do some sort of chemistry to this, so, say add some sort of group. You're gonna have some trouble because under most circumstances, that ketone group is going to react with whatever you want to react with this first because it's more reactive. So what you can do is you can kind of put this protecting group, so put this group on there, form that ether, then you can do this reaction on this group down here because this is not going to react and then later on you can have some conditions to remove this and then put that back on there plus your extra little group on down there which is basically exactly what we're doing but in this case we're actually attacking alkanes here so uh, I'm fairly sure put bromide groups sort of along the molecule and we can't react this raw cyclopentanone with the bromine because it's just going to attack that ketone group. This is sort of where it comes from it's quite a common reaction to um use ethylene glycol as a protecting group for a um, ketone. So a lot of you organic chemistry wizards out there will be familiar with these reaction conditions. What we're using is toluene uh, because we're forming water in this reaction, right? And we need some way of driving this reaction forward. So we need to remove water continuously from the reaction so that the reaction will keep going forward because if the water builds up, then it will just go back the other way. And you know, we might have 10% yield or something like that. Whereas if we can continue to remove water, that reaction is going to get forced that way. Toluene is a chemical I can't pronounce very well and haven't used all that much but it's very useful in this circumstance because it has an azeotrope with water so that is uh, it's going to boil in the presence of water earlier than it would without the uh, the water there so at a, at a lower temperature so that water is going to come over with the toluene as we boil it so it's going to get pulled out azeotropically and then we're going to collect it in a Dean Stark which, which I'll get into later on but yeah it's a way of having a solvent that's also actually going to drive this reaction forward. Now, the toluene also has another use as well um, we're going to be using sulfuric acid which is not going to work terribly well for this reaction I, I think or it might not play terribly nicely, but in the presence of toluene, we can drive this the reaction between sulfuric acid and toluene to form um, powered toluene sulfonic acid, which is PETSA here. And that's gonna be a strong acid that actually can dissolve in the organic solvents because everything here will dissolve nicely in the toluene except the sulfuric acid. So that will play the role as our strong acid to help this reaction along. If I had all the time in the universe to play with, I could make the paratolus tyrot sulfonic acid thing, TSA, whatever, four hands and then add it in. But um, we're gonna try and do this all in the bloody one pot and just have the sulfuric acid and, and hope it doesn't absolutely murder our reactions. Reactants? Reactants. Hopefully it just doesn't murder everything, including me. I don't want to get murdered by the sulfuric acid, um, but we'll have to see. So on paper, it's reasonably straightforward. I mean, it's it's not too bad, but there are a lot of little subtleties that we're going to have to take care of, and I might list them up. All right, okay, it's not that many steps. And I realized I've forgotten the entire step. But first of all, we need to purify our toluene because it's, it's very... Um, uh, low quality fuel grade basically so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to purify that then we're gonna have to run this whole reaction which might take a little while and then finally we're gonna actually have to vacuum distill our product and I think I'm gonna leave that for a future video because we haven't done a vacuum distillation before I haven't really done a vacuum distillation before here that's a brand new challenge that we're gonna have to gonna have to face the little worry for me is actually if we finish the uh, the video here and then we do the vacuum distillation in a later video we won't actually know if the synthesis has worked worked until after the vacuum distillation because we, we won't be able to tell if we have product or not until after the vacuum distillation which worries me a lot um, but uh, yeah it leaves us all in suspense <laughs> so you can watch this video and um, and just pray it works so let's get on to it this is my uh, toluene um, I don't have that much left. I was hoping to get some more. This is my litre container. But the store I buy it from is stop selling it by the litre. You used to be able to just take your own container and they'd sell you a litre for $8. But now they don't crack open the 20 litre cylinders that toluene comes in. You have to buy the whole 20 litres yourself and I'm not about to drop $160 on toluene. All we have left is uh, this container here. I just 
got it out to see how much was there. For this small first step here, we're uh, copying basically exactly a procedure from Doug's lab, which he highlights the fact that a lot of toluene, and I suspect this is the case for this one, contains some methyl thiophene. Thiophene? God, I'm terrible with words. Methyl thiophene which has a very similar boiling point to the toluene. However, in the presence of sulfuric acid, it tends to yellow up and tar up, and we don't want that in our final product or in our reaction mix at all, really. So the idea is to get the yellowing out the way early, and then we could just remove the yellow and hopefully not have yellowing going on later on in our reactions. And we're gonna do that with some uh, sulfuric acid, which will sulfonate the methylthiathene preferentially and um, should leave the toluene alone when it's all cold. we did this step that yellowed up a metric fuck ton and a half look at that that's crazy all right well glad we did it uh we're just gonna decant the toluene off ditch the sulfuric acid it's too yellow and then we're just gonna wash this with some bicarb so just stir it over with some bicarb for uh, a little while Alright, so we got all our reactants here. The toluene is a little wet. Uh, it's got a little bit of water at the bottom, but it should be fine. We only need 100 to 150 mils, really. Just take that little fraction off and leave that wet stuff behind and process it and put it into storage. We have our cyclopentanone from last video. That's uh, 54 grams. So we'll use, I think we'll use all of that. We have ethylene glycol here. This was in my cupboard, so that's great. Um, I can't remember why I needed this or what I did it for. November 2016, so that's three and a half years ago. I think it had something to do with the plastics video, trying to get benzene from PET. All right, so we need pure ethylene glycol from this ethylene glycol mess. So I lost all the footage for the ethylene glycol distillation. So uh, in summary, it was awful. So I've got a small amount of recovered dried ethylene glycol. I'll have to check it, but I'm fairly sure I just do it from antifreeze and it's pretty dry. But yeah, I think it comes from antifreeze. Anyway, we got 48 to 49 grams here and there. I'm just forgetting the numbers already. I just weighed it out. I'm pretty sure it was 49 grams. This is just, uh, you know, drain cleaner, concentrated sulfuric acid. So we use, I don't know, roughly three mils of that or something like that. So we're going to put it all in there and reflux, but we need a special kind of reflux here because we want to remove the water. So I have purchased a Dean Stark apparatus. And I haven't got one of these before because they're really not that like useful. But um, when you need one, it's it's really nice to have one. This is huge. I saw it and I was like, oh yeah, buddy 30 mil Dean Stark trap, that's fine. It's huge. That's fucking ginormous. Anyway, so this reaction is gonna look fucking weird as, because it's gonna be tall as all fuck. But, oh well. I'm gonna add everything except the ethylene glycol and just set it up to a bit of a reflux to see if we collect a bit of water. It'll be nice to dry it out first without uh, running into the ethylene glycol because we don't want the ethylene glycol reacting with itself to form dioxane. So the more progress we can make without the ethylene glycol in there, the better because then, you know, we're gonna to have to remove that water anyway before we can start the reaction. So we might as well do it without the ethylene glycol. Not sure if I'm overthinking it or underthinking it or thinking it exactly the appropriate amount. I never know with these videos. Everything's assembled. Uh, it's a little scary, but I think everything's clamped appropriately. We've just got a heating now. I've added a little bit, like uh, maybe a third of the ethylene glycol. I said I wouldn't add any, but I've just chickened out and added like a third of it. 
because now the problem is time because uh, the paper we're following reflux this for 30 hours while collecting the water in the Dean Stark trap, which means I'll probably do it just for all of today and, and maybe another day as well. I'm not sure about 30 hours. We'll be able to monitor the progress by how much water collects in this Dean Stark trap here. I will add the rest of the ethylene glycol at some point, maybe in, in two portions. I just don't want to flood it with ethylene glycol so that it starts reacting with itself. The paper didn't do it, but I'm, I'm a little worried that um, because we're using sulfuric acid rather than uh, you know the acidic resin that that, that might happen. But um, anyway, I got a long while to go, so um, yeah, already going yellow. Uh, developing a bit of a red crust around the outside. I'm not sure you can see that very well. You're dissolving into the solution and forming that orangey yellow color in there. So I do wonder if the ketones are doing something weird together because it's not enough ethylene glycol, which is a concern. Um, so I'm just gonna put the rest of the ethylene glycol in as per the paper did it all at the start. Maybe there was a reason for that. <laughs> um, uh, oh well, yeah, look, I'll just, just chuck it all in now and um, hopefully it's all fine. about all the time I have today to do this reflux. It's looking a bit black. Yeah, okay, it's black now. It was kind of a, a yellow and then it went a bit ready, but now it's now it's definitely black. Um, so hopefully it hasn't tied up. I mean, there's just some tar in there, but hopefully we do have some product. I still think there's quite a bit of water to come out of this, so there's still a bit of the reaction to push along. So I'm gonna come back another day in a couple of days and, and restart this. You can see it hasn't phase separated perfectly, but you can see a line here where this is all basically water and this is all sort of toluene. So I'm gonna take this out now and just weigh it. I realize that the markings are on the other side. <laughs> I put this around the, the other way. I should be, should be going that way rather than this way. Anyway, I'm gonna weigh this so we can work out just how much water we've taken out so far and we can kind of roughly work out how much longer the reaction has to go. So it's 25 grams of uh, liquid we've collected. Looking a little bit weird, but uh, it's mostly water. So we'll just, we'll just call it 25 mils of water. All right, we're back again after my uh, reasonably questionable decision to leave this set up for a couple of days until I next had some free time to do some stuff. But yes, we return here with our awfully tire looking uh, reaction pot. I've just started a refluxing again. It hasn't been refluxing for four days. It's fine, don't worry, calm down. I ran the calculations and we should only be producing about 15 mils of water from our two reactions, both the uh, toluene reacting with the sulfuric acid and the ether formation. And we've already produced, say, uh, I can't remember, it was about, it was 25 mils, right? So we collected 25 mils, we should only be producing 15. That's a bad sign. Our products could be especially wet, but um, I also have no idea where the end point is. We're just going to have to keep going until we don't see any more water coming over. And we can't rely on any theoretical calculations about where that should be. We're just going to do the entirely practical approach. Yeah, you can still see some water droplets sink there. So we are still getting some water through into the trap. That's uh, coming over a bit weird. I don't know what that's all about. It's a bit cloudy. It's up here too. Um, so... Don't know what's up with that, but uh, yeah, we're just gonna have to keep monitoring this until we get no more of those water droplets sinking. It's hard to think how it could look any worse than it does currently. I suppose it could all actually char up and it could just be activated carbon by the time we're finished, um, but fuck knows. All right, it's been refluxing for a total of eight hours now, and I know eight hours is a lot short of the 30 hours recommended to us, but there really isn't a lot more water coming over. The top of that tape, 
to that top of the line there is how much water it produced in the last hour. You can see some drops come through occasionally if we wait here long enough. Um, it's like every 40 seconds or so. Yeah, there's one, right? But, but it doesn't really add a whole lot to it. So I, I, ideally, of course, I'd just let this run for, you know, overnight or something, but I just don't have the time. Because <laughs> uh, what I want to do now is I want to take off the rest of the toluene, uh, see if there's any dioxane that comes off. I, I mean, I could sort of like pretend to distill it through this if I just like left the tap open and I could just distill off the toluene, but we have no temperature control and it shouldn't be too much effort just to, to, to change this setup to a simple distillation setup. And then we can see what we're left with. So thanks, Dean Stark. You've been helpful, but uh, the time is up now. It's time to time to move on. All right, I've quickly set this up for distillation, and I realised I've forgotten the entire step. There's a step in the middle where, um, after the Dean Stark, it's then um, neutralised, so that uh, um, it's no more sulfuric acid in there. Fuck! What do I do at this point? Um, look, it was fine refluxing before. Um, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna let it go. Uh, maybe it's to, to stop dioxane formation now, but, um, we're just gonna take off a little bit of solvent and then, uh, <laughs> leave that other set for the neutralization and then the rest of the toluene we can get rid of during the vacuum distillation. So we'll just remove, uh, the bulk of the solvent without, um, trying to boil it dry or anything like that. Off well, roughly 50 mils of toluene, toluene, toluene. Yep, yeah, that's fine. We could have taken more off, but I reckon I'll err on the safe side. Everything's still in solution here. We've just got to do a little bit of washing just to remove the sulfuric acid before our vacuum distillation. I assume it's to stop the sulfuric acid coming over with the product when you vacuum distill. So we'll uh, do that in the next episode. I'm sorry to split this into two parts, but otherwise things just get too long. I reckon, buddy, place your bets in the comments. What's our percentage yield? And no guessing a percentage yield of zero because that's that's too easy to guess, right? Assuming we have some yield, what's the uh, what's the percentage yield? And I'll, buddy, I'll PayPal the winning guess two dollars. How's that? That's incentive. I, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. It's two dollars though. It's two Australian dollars, which is like a dollar fifty US. But correctly guess what our percentage yield will be of the ether after vacuum distillation. All right. I'll see you next time. Really excited about it. <laughs>